Hi everybody and welcome to this exclusive reaction episode of the Endless Celts podcast. Uh, you may notice that Stephen's not hosting today. Uh, he had a few family things uh, happening today, so um, I've taken over. Um, I'm joined today by regulars uh, Ross and William. How are you guys doing? Doing good, mate. Good stuff. So obviously, as we're all aware, uh, and I'm sure as all Celtic fans are aware, um, the, we got the news today that the managerial appointment uh, has been confirmed and announced and that it is in fact and as as expected uh, Ange Postecoglou. Um just coming to you first, William, um what what was your thoughts when when you seen that announcement? Um it's difficult. I mean the last for the last ever since Mr Howe announced he wasn't coming and uh Posta Coglu was, was installed as a favourite. I'm I'm not gonna lie, I was I've been very underwhelmed um since that that, uh, yeah. that announcement took place. The the fact that the board had taken so long to make an appointment, I was like I've, I've been saying it on other podcasts previous that we've been talking about that uh they've been digging a hole and I, I felt like they need to, to bring a big name in. Uh so the first the first feeling I had was still that underwhelming but also massive relief because we've actually finally got somebody announced and where we can start planning and moving things forward and um, that was until i seen his, his interview but we'll touch on that later but uh, yeah so f- first of all it was i was a bit underwhelmed but relief mainly because i mean we're, we're not far away we keep banging on about we're not far away for the champions league qualifiers etc and uh, the fact that we've finally got somebody almost in the door uh, rearing to go, uh, it's just we start getting butterflies, we start getting excited again because yeah. uh, the season's we're ready. We're ready for the season. Well, we're not ready, but we've got somebody in that can finally start work. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, absolutely. I, I, I would firmly agree with that, uh, William. I think that for myself, obviously, like you mentioned there, it was a, it was a, you, you're a bit relieved that there's finally an appointment in place and that that whole managerial circus and that the delay in that appointment has went on long enough. Uh, so finally getting something concrete um, coming out uh, and stating that we have got a manager in place now, like he says, it, it's, it's time to just get behind them, start looking forward and, and start getting a bit of excitement about us again and, and look forward to the new season and the qualifiers and everything else. Um, Ross, what about yourself? What was your thoughts when you seen the, the, the news breaking that um, Celtic had finally appointed a manager? Um... Aye, I mean, it was just similar to what you have said yourselves. Uh, probably uh, my overriding emotion was a sort of emptiness. Um, I wasn't like elated as I would have been with other appointments, um, but uh, I, I, I didn't really feel much, but I, I was glad that this whole saga has basically come to an end. Um, and as you say, we can start looking forward there's a man in place now. We can start building. We can start talking about uh, new signings. Guys who are obviously, it's already started. Guys are leaving. Um, so I just really building towards the future now and the, the next chapter. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. Uh, I don't know if I get away with stealing Stephen's catchphrase <laughs> there, but I thought, I'd, I, I thought I'd throw it in as a wee nod to the man seeing as he's not here. Um, no, but you are absolutely uh, correct again, Ross. Um I think for most Celtic fans, I'm assuming that most of them would probably, I think the majority of them, uh, maybe a small handful knew who Postigoglu was or heard his name before. Uh, and very likely through international management. But uh, as you say, it's a bit underwhelming in terms of the name because it is an unknown. There is a bit of risk. It is a bit of a gamble because he's not managed in the uh, in Europe or he's not experienced the sort of European leagues or European football. Uh, which he's going to be thrust into um, in the deep end in just a matter of weeks. Um, and I think we all are fully expecting uh, Celtic to hit the ground running. Uh, and he's not got much time to do that. So um, I think it's... Uh, it, but at the end of the day, uh, as I said, it's it's one of those things where we're finally... What's that, 106 days? Uh, or was it 105 yesterday? So day 106, you know, having a manager, uh, this announcement's came out. And, and, and for me... Uh, it's it's went on and dragged out far far too long, but yeah. um, I just want to uh, come back and say ask you guys again. I know you've been 
both of you have appeared on podcasts in recent weeks, uh, especially since the, the 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 news broke that how um, had had that deal had fell through, and you guys obviously reacted to the news a postcode glue being linked uh, at the time. And uh, you may have done this in recent episodes anyway, but just now that he's in the door, just to ask again, where, where are you guys? sitting now or where's your thinking uh where's your thought process in terms of his appointment and uh, enlarging and what are you expecting for him um over the next couple of weeks as he comes in william um to be honest i've not looked up much on my everybody that listens to the podcast knows i'm a, well, not a stickler for rumors and um i stay away from them so to be honest i, I know I've, I've listened to the podcast with, with, with you guys um, that I've done a bit more research on him and listened into that, but I didn't want to get too caught up in it in, in, uh, in case it was another um, massive letdown and he wasn't the man coming in. Now, I, I did say I was underwhelmed, and I have been, uh, because as most, I don't know an awful lot about this guy. But I watched his um, interview today through Zoom, which is obviously how he's been bloody... Uh, Tain on as well through Zoom interviews and whatnot, but and uh, you probably think I'm going to sound mental here, but if you do, you go back and watch it again because I was sitting on my couch and as soon as he started talking and I was listening to things he's saying, I felt like I felt like he had me in his arms. I was lying in my wee bed and he's sitting telling me everything's going to be all right. Don't yep. worry about it. Yeah, man. Everything he was saying, I was like. And I know, I know there's like a, a list of these things to go through that the <clears throat> Mackay and also I've been saying, and, and he's not a silly man, he knows himself, but he's got to say that like, oh, I'm here for the fans and I want to play attractive football and all this sort of stuff. But I believed him. I believed everything he was saying. And the biggest thing I took away from it was when he was talking about how, like, how passionate he was when he was talking about us as fans and how it's a generational thing and it's passed on, and, and even the little nods to like his, his dad and how he, he had Kenny Dalglish posters when he was younger and stuff like that. Um, I felt like he came across very confident. He seems very confident in his abilities, uh, very laid back. He does not seem like a yes man to me. I, I think it's going to be his way or, or, the, or the highway. He just made me feel really, like I say, at ease. I felt like I was in his arms and he was like, listen, I know this is your baby. I'm going to look after it. Don't worry, we'll get we'll get there. And uh, yeah. I just felt that, that, that I talk about relief earlier. After that, I just a big smile on my face, and I think I'm so excited for the future. And all this talk about losing Ayers and Edwards and all that, I'm not bothered anymore. <laughs> I feel like this guy at the helm, and I know it sounds silly because it's just one re-interview, but he really, really made me feel like uh, he's a proper, proper manager, and he's going to take control, and and we're, we're going to be all right. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I definitely I fully agree with that. I thought that interview that he done with Celtic TV um, regarding his appointment was fantastic. I mean, I, I'd said uh, the other week there that I'd obviously doing a little bit of due diligence myself, checking out interviews that he's done previously, watching highlights of matches, the teams he's managed before internationally and at club level, and seeing the kind of football that he plays. And you're right, he, he, he does come across as a no-nonsense uh, individual. He, he does not seem like a yes man in the slightest. Uh, but what, as you mentioned there, what I found incredible about that, or, or like you say, was a relief and and just sort of helped build a wee bit more confidence in him and, and, and just sort of affirmed the faith that I was starting to put in him after the stuff that I'd seen was when he started talking about Celtic. And as you mentioned there, when he, when he mentioned that he's aware of the fans, uh, he had posters on his wall, he knows how big the club is. Uh, he knows what it means to the support as well, um, and that he, he was mentioning as well that he obviously he knows Tom Rogic, he knows Scott McDonald, um, and these other guys, and, and he, he's no doubt heard a lot of stories, and he, he obviously seems to, to, or at least on the surface, that he's well aware of the size of the club he's coming into, he's well aware of the history and everything else, and he almost come across like one of us, he's just another fan. Uh, and he was talking about how massive Celtic are in Australia as well. So I thought that that was fantastic. And I, I, I thought that that interview was, was was a great start. And I don't think he could have got after any better start in his first sort of interaction with the fans, if you like. 
Um, and I, I just thought it was absolutely superb. Um, what about you, Ross? What, what, what was your thoughts Did, when you see that video and, and you heard what he had to say? And are, are you warm to him a little bit more, or you? What, what's, your, what's your situation with you? Um, well, first of all, I absolutely love the way he says "mate" because <laughs> exactly, it, just, it just works, man. I, I used to be a big fan of neighbours, so it's, it just works for me. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I'm just going to be boring and pretty much echo what you boys have said. Um, I was very impressed with his interview. He, he, he talked very well. He, he, he seems a very down to earth uh, guy uh, with a, a good air about him. Um, as I've said, he speaks well. Uh, and <clears throat> what I, I took for the interview as well is, and it's it's been documented before, but again, it's it's like well, he says you're only reading things, but he, he seems to he seems to have a clear philosophy and idea of what he wants to do and what he wants the team to become. He's got a, a definite way of playing where it's it's been documented, but you can see in the way he talks that there is truth to that. He mm. uh, he just comes across so genuine, and uh, as Willie said, uh, I, I I totally agree with him. For some reason, I believe every single word that he said. Uh, he seems to get what Celtic and the fans expect, and, yeah. and what we're about. Uh, I mean, again, I know it's just words just now, but I'm left after that interview. I'm left feeling only positive. So, I mean. Let the white smoke bellow, man. <laughs> uh, we are we are all Angie Postic. <laughs> right, no, I mean, that's a, uh, sorry, on you go. On. So, see, just a t- I know, like, like I said, I know he's got a remit, and there's like a list of things he's got to say. Like, oh, it's all about the fans, and I want to play this. But uh, yeah, I believe they're going to say that, and also like the way he talked about the youth coming through, and and. Yeah, I was just, just going to go into yeah, that. Just, just, his, just his whole demeanour, and uh, he just seems so laid back as well. And like, and the biggest thing as well also is like he seemed genuinely mega excited to come over and get this opportunity. And we're uh, all, so we're all to... yeah, we're all oh, sitting for it. sorry, we're all sitting for weeks and weeks and months talking about how obviously how wasn't as invested as we all thought and like you don't want that you want commitment we always talk about players at the club if they don't want to be here then go and do one then this guy's seemed genuinely excited at the opportunity to take on as he says is one of the biggest clubs in the world and that's how we all see it um so yeah it's only positives for me for me if he, it feels like he seems like he's he's there for the long haul um it, like eddie howe Aye. would be good but after a year or two he could up sticks and left and back down south. I feel this yeah. guy is here for three, four, five years, uh, and he's it's it's a project, and he's privileged to be the manager, and that's what you want, as well as says, uh, as well as says as well. Eddie Howe wasn't he as invested, and in, I mean for it to take as long. In hindsight, there's no way Celtic should have waited for the guy, but they did. That is what it is. But this yeah. guy. As he, he he looks genuinely proud and delighted to be our manager, and that's a that, that's a great thing. Absolutely, and I think you'd be hard pressed uh, as well to sort of find any fan who's seen that video uh, would have anything negative to say about it. As I say, like, and William, well, you, you touched on it perfectly just a minute ago. You mentioned um, that. You, it, it, as the same way every managerial appointment, everybody that comes through the doors, that they've got it almost sounds scripted. Some of the stuff that they say, mm-hmm. uh, but like this guy generally sounded believable. It sounded hard. It sounded like he was passionate about it, uh, and it, just the way he spoke about the club and, and and how much he's looking forward to to the job. And, and like you mentioned as well, it, Ross, it, it does sound like he's got a long term vision in mind because he wasn't speaking like we know it's a twelve month rolling contract, and I'll get to that in a minute, but. We know that with that kind of scenario, um, your 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 sort of position as a manager then isn't cemented, and you know that they can get let go at any time. But for this guy, he he's obviously he's got that twelve month rolling contract offer. He's obviously bit the hand after him. He accepts it. He looks excited. He looks happy to be coming in. Um, but he was speaking like he had a long term vision. Now, um, well, you you did mention I was going to bring it up. Uh, obviously about the the sort of youth development and taking advantage of the, 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 the sort of talent you've got 
uh, within the club itself anyway. Um, uh, and this is something that we've spoke about quite regularly on this podcast as well. Uh, the sort of youth and the, the, the fact that in, in recent years especially they've not been getting as many chances as maybe they should and potentially losing out on some some good youth players. Um, so do, do you believe that, that that is something that he should be focusing on? And, and, and based on these comments uh, in his interview, do you feel that that's something he's also passionate about? Yeah. Um, he said, I think he, he went along the lines of saying, I don't really care what age you are. If you've got the ability, you're going to you're going to be in the team or you're in the squad. I do think it's something we're going to have to look at, press on with. There's been countless, countless names that look like they've got great potential in the, in the years gone by and um, they've not even had a sniff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully he can come in. I think I thought Ron, Ronnie was one that he was a big advocate of it and he did. He brought through he brought through Cal Mack and KT and all the rest of it, didn't he? So I'm hoping this is going to be something similar and also... It's not look at we're, we're, it's a massive rebuild that we're talking about. So yeah. I think that he might not have much of a choice but to look at the youth. And obviously the day and age we're in with the COVID and the funds and uh, etc. Uh, I think it might be something he's gonna he's not he's gonna hands are gonna be tied anyway. But yeah, like I say, <laughs> I was hanging on every word he says. I, I felt like. Uh, I felt like he was just giving me a big cuddle and saying like, it's all right, everyone's going to be okay. And uh, yeah. the last couple of seasons, we've seen how uh, Lennon's been with the media after games. Everyone, I'm just sitting cringing and upset at what he's saying. I feel like even if it did go tits up and, and Poster Coglu's getting an interview afterwards, they'll just calm me right down and say, you know what, don't worry about it. We'll be fine. I'll sort it. I'll sort you out. So, yeah, massive, mass, all just all positive, positive, positive. I feel great today. Um, like I say, when the, when the first the announcement first came through, I was a bit, a bit underwhelmed. But it's, it's, and I know it's stupid because it's just one interview. But like I say, I just felt so at ease, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just super excited for the to see what happens over the summer, um, the, the ins and outs, and 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 I, I can't wait to see this philosophy um, on our team. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and again, I think you're absolutely right. It, it, it's the way he puts himself across. Um, there was a lot of talk as well before he comes in. They were saying whether or not he was going to be able to handle the goldfish bowl uh, in the media up here because they will pick him apart uh, at every opportunity. Um, but like he says, just seeing the guy, uh, the way he speaks um, and his confidence and the way he comes across. And like if he's, he is a no-nonsense individual. I, I personally feel like uh, it's something he'll, he'll be able to handle uh, with relative ease, and I don't think he's got the uh, and the, no disrespect to Lennon, but I don't think he's going to come across uh, the way Lennon did, especially in the sort of latter end uh, uh, his term at Celtic. Um, Ross, just as I was saying there um, about the youth, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but w- w- do you echo what William's saying? You, did, you, did you when you seen that? interview and the way he was saying, like William says when he mentioned that it doesn't matter what age you are, if you're a talented player you're going to get your opportunity, do you think that's the way forward for Celtic at this stage? Absolutely aye, um, I mean personally myself uh, as regards youth I don't mean to, I don't mean to sound harsh um, I don't I'm no massive, like, I'm trying to find the right way to put this I'm, I'm no too fussed about the youth in the sense if if you're good enough, then great, come through the ranks. But if there's nobody good enough, don't just be putting guys in that just yeah. to say you've brought youth through. I, I just want uh, the yeah, best available. That. I just want the best available players to be in Celtic's squad starting eleven, whether that be somebody they've signed or a youth player. It doesn't matter to me. But it's a good model. Um, if you can try and bring guys through. Uh, and I totally agree that it doesn't matter what age you are. If you're good enough, you should play. It's worked in the past, not only at Celtic, but at other clubs. Um, I mean, Alex Ferguson, for instance, the, the team in the 90s, he was told you, you can't win leagues with uh, youth players, but he like proved that wrong <laughs> time and time again. So, mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean, youth, uh, if you can bring them through and they're good enough, Absolutely, Kieran Tierney, absolutely world class, came through, 
and we've had other guys that have come through, but don't don't just bring guys through for the sake of it, just to give them a game, uh, yeah, because because it it needs to be for the right reasons. Yeah, no, definitely, I would agree with that. I mean, I think that's a fair statement to make. You don't want to see guys just getting chucked into the team for the sake of it. Uh, but as we've seen, like you mentioned, Tierney coming through uh, McGregor, um, and you've got other boys that have well showed this year that even being chucked into the deep end, they still showed themselves in a decent light. Uh, and we know there's other guys in that youth team, like Caramel and Dembele, we've been screaming it for a wide player all season, and he's just been sitting there and not getting an opportunity when it's somebody we could have utilised and who, who could have probably benefited the team and his own development as well. I would, um, I would I, absolutely love to see more of that, laddie. He's, he looks, out of the little that we've got coming through, he looks, for me, any time I've seen him, he looks the real deal. Uh, I, I don't know like if that's maybe a bit premature saying that, but any time he's come in, he's 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 done what's asked him. And he's put the ball in the net with a plum. Aye. And no, I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I'm sure, William, you would agree as well. Dembele is one of these guys who has been touted for the minute he came in to the club and he's been playing at a level much higher than his age uh, as well, which shows how talented he is and the fact and, he's been able to handle it. And if uh, if Poster Cogler's uh, philosophy is, is is what I'm everything I'm reading about, then Dembele seems to fit that bill perfectly. Uh, this high press attacking inside inside forward or inside inverted winger uh, type player. Um, every time he gets the ball, all he does all he wants to do is run at that full back, and it's it's the Glasgow Celtic way. That's what we've. I've been brought up watching, so um, and what we've been I, missing, aye, and uh, so uh, fingers crossed we get to see a bit of him. Uh, hopefully, he gets a good run at pre season, and then uh, the manager um, spots it in him, and, and he gets a good run on the side. Fingers crossed. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to sort of touch on was the uh, the contract he's got now. Obviously, we know it's a twelve month rolling contract, which in some cases you could say uh, is a decent business model in this day and age. Um, you're not tying anybody down and you're not risking compensation if things don't work out and you're terminating contracts, etc. Would do, do you guys feel that the 12-month rolling contract's fair or would you like to have seen them tied down to a more longer-term deal? William, sorry. Um, I don't know. There's pros and cons, isn't there? I mean, like you say, there's a, the whole compensation side if it doesn't go right and um, you, risk the, you risk losing them if, it, uh, if, if, he, if he does a great job. Um, I mean, this has been the way Celtic and the board have done business for however long is it? I think Rogers was the only one since Rogers and Strachan, maybe. I think the only two that got actual contracts rather than twelve month rolling. I think pretty much every other manager done it. I don't have an issue. With it. I think I think it's probably the right thing to do. Um, seeing as this manager is pretty much unknown as well, um. And he seems like Ross said, seems very committed uh, to the cause. Anyway, I think, I think it's probably the right thing for both parties. And remember, he's moving his he's moving his family to the other side of the world as well. Um, it's a big it's a big deal. So I think um, I think it probably is the best for all parties concerned. Yeah, more about yourself, Ross. Would you agree with that? I totally agree with that. Um, as well, he says he's moving his family to the other side of the world. Uh, most most of the Celtic managers. For the turn of the century, as as far as I can remember, uh, I've been twelve months ro- month long contracts. Uh, I think Martin O'Neill even had that, and look how successful he was. Look how long he stayed. Uh, I think it was five years in the end. But um, I I think personally it works for both parties. It's fair uh, if it goes wrong for Celtic uh, for Postecoglou, then Celtic are not tied to him if you like. Yeah. Um, so it, it's less risk to it although he's an untried manager on these shores so there is there is that risk but I I think it, it's it's I, I fairly expected it uh, and I would have expected possibly Eddie Howe to have had that as well um, so I I'm, I have no no issues with that whatsoever no, I mean, I, I would agree. Uh, I think it's a, it's a decent model uh, to work with. And as I say, in no disrespect to Postacoglu, and I'm, I'm excited about the prospect of going forward, but it is still a gamble because it is still a relative unknown. And we don't know how he's going to handle uh, this the, the, the sort of the, the league environment in Scotland and playing in Europe and everything else because it's a hell of a lot different from uh, where he's coming from. But that brings me on to my next up. point. He'll rip it up. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> 
well, this I think this is what we're all hoping for, eh? and, and but we're all confident that maybe he can do this because, like he says, he, he's putting himself across in a really good light at the minute, and like he says, it's bringing some excitement back at least for me and you guys, as you, as you've said. But as I, said, I, I just want to move on to the next thing, and this is obviously where his knowledge of the sort of Australian and Japanese market and things like that can come in handy now. Celtic have obviously seen some players come through their doors uh, for these countries uh, in that continent and, and, and they've been fantastic. Um, if he's able to bring his knowledge of that market across here and bring us, the, I'd like to say, another Nakamura, uh, Viduka, Rogic, McDonald, um, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that that would be fantastic if he's able to pick some of these players for these leagues. Um, what's your thinking on that, William? Do you, do you, would you agree with that? Do you think that his knowledge of these markets could prove beneficial? Yeah, I mean, like we've discussed about how the the, the situation we're in, the environment we're in now with COVID, and how money's money's tight everywhere. And we like we all know what the European leagues are like, and the, and the astronomical figures that they're, they're touting for. Like it's just stupid. The the figures that players some players are going for. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can't see it being uh, silly money to bring uh, players from these shores. Uh, we've seen it; it's worked before in the past. It's also not worked out in the past. Uh, I think it's something definitely that we could um, make use of. Uh, yeah, another another string of his bow. He's got that knowledge of that side of the, and it's not often that um, clubs this side of the ocean do. Uh, take a punt on these players, so I definitely think it could be beneficial. But uh, like we always say, every transfer is a risk. Some have worked, some haven't. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see who he does bring in because, like we say, it's a massive. It's, it seems like it's going to be a massive turnover this year. I think we're going to have a, a pretty much a brand new team, maybe two or three in the first eleven from last season, and then it's just going to be massive overhauls. So it's it's it's. Nervous butterflies have started, but it's really exciting as well to know that um, this is a fresh start. Could be fresh changes and, and new talent coming in and uh, ready to hit the ground running this season. I'm I'm really looking forward to it now. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what about yourself, Ross? Would would you think his knowledge of the sort of Asian uh, market, etc., um, is that something that could benefit us going forward, or or do you think that we should be looking more closely at home? Um. I think it's certainly something that could benefit us. Uh, it gives us a, lets us go further afield uh, with less risk, if you like. I mean, I, I like Celtic going into the British market. It's, it's worked in the past uh, under, like, say, Martin O'Neill. Uh, Lennon's first term, it worked under him going into the British market. Uh, and obviously, you, you can you sprinkle that with foreigners. But... Um, Poste Coglu, as, as we know, has got a, a, a wealth of knowledge of that market and players that side of the, the world, if you like. Um, he's, it certainly could benefit us. Uh, and it comes... It, the, the problem is, like, he knows these players and he, he could he could have worked with them in the past and they, they know him, but moving that distance is still the risk. You come over, it might not work out. We're in a pandemic still. Uh, obviously, it's not as bad as it was, but we're still in it. Um, <clears throat> but it certainly it, it gives gives Celtic, if you like, another string to their bow, uh, and they they can go into that market knowing that their manager has a knowledge of it. So, uh, I it, it, it sort of widens their radar, if you like. Yeah, no, absolutely, and and like I say, uh, if if let's say for just hypothetically, if he's able to unearth another like say a Nakamura, or and or someday a a, a goal scorer that with the likes of Viduka or McDonald, I'm sure Celtic fans would be pretty happy with that. No. Um, and I mean the the, the, the sorry, but in there, John, they they like types of players for like not not for Britain if you like, uh, they're. They tend to be more technically uh, gifted than guys for like Scotland, uh, and uh, dare I say it, they they fitter. So um, I, 
you just don't know. You you see what happens. Yeah. Um. So another thing I just want to touch on as well is obviously Bossy Coglu's announcement has been uh, circulating today. Like I said, unless you've been living under a rock as a Celtic fan, you, you're well aware of his appointment now, and it's as a case he's just sort of looking forward. But what one thing that does sort of worry me to an extent is the fact that. There's still no mention or, or any sign of him bringing in his own team, his own backroom team, which means that the likes say John Kennedy uh, and Strachan um, will probably be by his side uh, when the season starts. Uh, at least at this point, that's what it's looking like. Uh, what's your thoughts on this, William? Do, were you hoping that once a manager was announced, there was other things following it? Or are you hoping that that's going to trickle in over the next few days? Yeah, I'm hoping it's. I'm hoping there's going to be some sort of announcement. And I did notice in his interview that he did say, "I can't wait to get over and meet the staff, meet the players." Which uh, my first thought was that he's he's got Kennedy and 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 that thrown at him, uh, thrown up on him, and he's he's had to deal with it. I might be wrong, but that was my that was my takeaway from what he said. I really hope he does get to bring his own backroom staff. Um, We've we've been vocal enough before, and and there's nothing against Kennedy. He's he's been a fantastic servant for the club, um, but he should have went, and Strachan should have went when when Lennon left as well. I mean, yeah. it's not we've been spanging on. It's not one man's fault. The the, the downfall of our club this season, um. So, and I understand there needs to be some sort of go between, uh, some sort of familiarity. But I mean, and, and, and we've said it before. I thought Scott Brown could have been that man perfectly. He could have fit in perfectly being a coach, player coach, or something for another year. But again, that's that's not not what's not not what's happened. Uh, I can't I can't see him coming all the way over here not having his own background staff. He's got to. They've got to give him. They've got to give him somebody. Yeah. Uh, I really really hope they do because I think that's just us taking. Um, one step forward and two steps back if we're if we're going down that that route. So if, I'm hoping that he does get to bring in his own his own staff. Yeah, no, I, I, I and that's the one thing for me anyway that uh, like like you mentioned earlier through his interview and sort of building that confidence in you and you you sort of you're buying into what he's saying. Um, but then he didn't mention anything about his own guys and he says going going over there and meeting the staff and building relationships and stuff stuff like that. So it does sort of. All signs seem to point to uh, Ange, Kennedy and Strachan dug out uh, next season. Ross, um, is that something that you're hoping doesn't happen or, or, or can you see that being the case? Um, I think I think you'll probably find that Kennedy will be on the, the coaching staff in some capacity. Um, I would be surprised if he, if uh, Postacoglu didn't bring one or two of his own guys. Uh, just guys that he trusts. Uh, he, he might bring in like a sort of number two, and then Kennedy would be under that. Uh, which I've said previously, I wouldn't be adverse to because Kennedy's worked uh, under successful tenures, um, and he's been part of the problem this year, if you like. And, uh, I, I think if he's further away from like actually making decisions, uh, like as a number two, if you like, but more as a coach on the training field. I think it could work. Uh, I think the guys, uh, as in the players and stuff, I think they like him. Uh, but <sighs> Strachan, uh, just there's no words for that guy. Um, it's this, it's an it's an old pal's act. That's the only reason he's there. It's one of the not what you know, it's who you know. But I mean, he could certainly he could utilize the laptop and we could use him for a but good venues for Christmas nights out and stuff like that. <laughs> um, other than that, um, nah, he's, 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 he's no for me, the guy, but that's I would, great um, respect, do you know what I mean? But I would agree sorry. with you about uh, Kennedy, by the way, Ross. It's a good point. I, 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 like, if it was, I wouldn't want him to be uh, assistant or have a say-so, but in a coaching capacity, I wouldn't mind him. I, like, as much as we didn't do well under his tenure from the last 10 games, he's, He's always been great with the media, and he, you're bang on. Right. It does seem like he's got a great relationship with the playing squad. And, and if he's carrying out Postecoglou's instructions and no his own instructions, if you like, right. then I don't see a problem with that. Because, I mean, people say he was part of the, the, the problem this season, 
but at the end of the day, he was probably still only carrying out what Neil Lennon was telling him to do. And then he was part of a successful staff when he was carrying out what Brendan Rodgers told him to do. So it's, it's I, you just I, don't I, really know. Matt, it's, it's just this whole, and it's always been the case for years and years, this whole need to get a Celtic man in. Uh, uh, sort of attitude where we, I know we don't, I, we don't need that. And my first thought was, and he, kept, he, was, he, he was talking about Scotty McDonald. Oh, Scotty and that is if like they've obviously worked together. Mm-hmm. Uh, that might be that might have been an avenue for him to bring him in. He's obviously uh, like very underrated, Scott McDonald. That was what that was in the last uh, couple of, uh, the last twenty years or so. That striking side was one of the worst sides we've had, but they were they um, overperformed. They were they overachieved. They were fantastic. They were and a he, team. They were a team, they weren't, a, they weren't individuals, but yeah, they were a yeah. proper team. And everybody worked for each other, and Scotty McDonald was a big part of that. I, I, I've got a lot of time, and I thought that might have been an avenue they could have went down. I don't know how much a relationship they've got, but the way he came across in the video sounded like they were they had a decent relationship, so I thought something like that might have worked, but who knows? Um, time will tell. I really hope he does get... He doesn't just get landed with, with Kennedy and Strachan, though. I think, he'd really, I think they need to give him somebody that he feels comfortable with and somebody that he needs, can work with. Uh, I think he needs to bring somebody with him as well, moving that distance. I think I, I'd Master, be absolutely right. amazed if there wasn't at least one guy that he knows coming in alongside him. Absolutely yeah, like was, yeah, yeah. Massive, massive um, distance to travel and move to a total different culture. Yeah, I think uh, for him to feel comfortable in this working environment, I think it's only right that he gets to bring somebody. Yeah. So I think the next few weeks is going to be really important then just to, well, we still see whether or not anything materialises for that and whether or not we get any further new information regarding, uh, obviously we will, regarding his appointment and him coming over to the country and the, the isolation and everything else he has to deal with, but hopefully we hear some news regarding uh, some sort of backroom team or him bringing a couple of his own guys over. Um, I just want to touch on, lastly as well, um, just before we start wrapping things up, uh, it was a two for one today, guys, and as you are aware, it wasn't just an interview and a managerial announcement and an interview with, with Angie that we got. Uh, we also heard from our new CEO. Um, he came out and actually done a video interview and spoke uh, as well. Uh, both of you guys seen the video, right? You heard what he said yeah. today? Aye. Aye. Um, I think uh, it was good to hear from him, personally. Um, I thought that as I say, it was much like you expect for anything that when a guy comes in, as you mentioned, at the top of the show as well, William. Uh, it's almost scripted. He says the stuff that you expected him to say. Uh, but there was a couple of things uh, that he mentioned that um, sort of struck me as interesting. Uh, and mainly it was the modernisation of the club top to bottom uh, through the, the team uh, and behind the scenes as well. Um what was your take on his interview overall, William? Uh, and what do you th- what do you, what do you think he means when he talks about modernisation of the club and bringing things uh, up to date throughout the club uh, as a whole? I have no idea. He keeps <laughs> banging on about this modernisation thing. I've, I've not got a scooby do what he's talking about. Um, I like you say, I did. I felt like it was like I mean, he's a businessman, and, and like I know they all uh, use a certain jargon and and. Uh, the way they, they speak, but it did seem a lot. It was very scripted for me. Um, I know it was nice to hear him talk about how the club is very dear to his heart. We obviously know he's a, he's a supporter and stuff like that. And and it does seem like he, he, it did seem positive in, in the changes and stuff he wanted to make. But the biggest thing I took away was his enthusiasm um, for Postacoglu and is coming in, and also in Big Ange. I want to call him Big Ange. I like that better, <laughs> instead of Posta Coglu. So Big Ange, Big Ange's interview as well, the two of them talked about how they've started to build a relationship already, and they were they, they both seemed very enthusiastic. Uh, so uh, Don Mackay's interview, that's what I took away. He was so enthusiastic about uh, Ange and the relationship they've, they've built, and that they're both on the same page, and moving forward and, and the vision in the future. So we're not talking about the now, we're talking about what we've long always term, we want. Yeah. yeah, long term we want um we don't want reaction. Um we want to act now. We want we want to be proactive. We don't want to be reactive. So 
all those things that gave me a bit of a lift and uh, the relationship between him and the manager, which is obviously massive. Um, it seems like they've started on the right foot. Very enthusiastic. So that was the points I took away. But again, it was very, yes, I know we're doing our best and I must thank Mr. Lolo and they've been unprecedented in the past 12 years and the job they've done. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Shut up. Just tell us <laughs> what we want to hear. So... Uh, Aye, there was some positive step, but again, aye, like I say, it was just a bit blah, 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 blah. You felt like fast forwarding some of it, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I, I felt the exact same when I watched it. It all seemed pretty cut and paste. Um, it was just aye. a case of repeating the stuff you'd expect them to say, the stuff that we would all say. Uh, you, anybody in his position would likely come out and say all the exact same things, but again, he has to try and appeal to the fans, and he's got a bit of work to do in order to try and rebuild relationships as well. Um, but like you mentioned, it was good to hear from him. It's good to actually see him come out and, and speak. And like you mentioned, these, the, the, the chat, he, he, rather, or the segment he had he, during his interview where he was talking about his relationship with Bagange, I think we'll affectionately call him Bagange <laughs> going forward. Uh, <laughs> it suits him, to be fair. Um, but I mean, I think that that, that that part of his interview definitely struck me as the most important as well. Um, but the reason I mentioned this modernisation thing is because, like you said there, William, what even does that mean? Um, and no to what extent? Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, for myself anyway, what, what he means with that um, during his tenure uh, as CEO and what, what, what his vision for the club is. And I'm hoping that he comes out a little bit more um, and, and gives us more information about what his sort of vision is um, and, and what his plans are. Um, but what about yourself, Ross? What did you make his uh, first interview? Um, I thought it was good uh, to touch on the modernisation. I think, I mean... you got I'm a theory on this, Ross? Is this... I'm, I'm only... Uh, well, no. I've just thought it the other now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it could be, like, marketing and stuff. Uh, like, not having wee sly digs at the fans. We, like, say, that thing the other day. The... The future is our focus. They need to be more aware of how the fans are feeling, eh, things like that. But I mean, eh, I certainly liked the way he carried himself. And I re- like, certainly in this podcast, the worry has been that this appointment, eh, Big Ange, eh, has been solely <laughs> a long appointment. Eh, and I think what I took for it was that it, it hasn't been. Eh, I think he's had a big say in it, eh, and it came across to me Aye. that having having yep. post have had many conversations, and that the, the, they share a, a, an equal vision, a eh, eh, modernising across the board. Eh, obviously, post will be focusing focusing on the football aspect. He eh, playing a modern, free flowing, fast attacking football that. Is quite popular, eh, like say with Bielsa and Klopp and things like that. And then your man Mackay will be bringing in, eh, basically what he's brought to the the rugby setup. And every person that I've spoke to that follows rugby has only said good things about him. And like, basically, he's pretty much modernised him and turned the Scottish rugby eh, international team around on its head. And they've been. Nothing short of excellent. They were outstanding in the Six Nations. I know they didn't win it, but for where they were to what they are now, eh, it's quite incredible. So, uh, again, I'm only positive and I'm only s- surmising what modernising means, but eh, aye, we'll just see what happens. Time will tell, really. That's a good yeah. point, to be fair, Ross. I never, I'm talking about how uh, I'm taking away about how he's talking about uh, uh, Big Ange and his relationship. I never, I never actually thought that I, we've all been banging on, this is a law appointment, but you're, you're bang on, we're listening to the both of them in the interviews, it does seem like Mackay's been a massive part to play, if not like, the biggest part, and he's, and he's, it's been his, he's been a massively decisive in this That's decision to bring him like. on. Yeah, it does. It yeah. like anyway. See this modernisation thing, right, it just came to me there, do you think that's, do you think it could be like, see like, the remit and, and the module that like Borussia Dortmund have got and Salzburg and stuff like that, where they look for the hottest, the, the hottest young talent all over Europe, and they do. They pay decent money for them at the time, but then they take them on for a few years, and 
and then sell them on for massive money. Is, is that maybe? Or am I just cutting it across here? Yeah, no, Celtic, I mean... Celtic have done that model in the past with guys like Van Dijk and Wanyama and... Uh, Aye, but I'm not so sure they were like the hottest property. You know what I mean? Like, I'm no, not like... no, but I don't think... Personally, I don't think Celtic can attract the hottest property like Borussia Dortmund can go and get uh, Jude no. Bellingham and Sancho aye. and then no, sell no. them for three figures. But I mean, aye. I mean, spending decent money on these guys. Like we've done with Edward. I know it, it looks like we're not going to get a massive fee for him now. We sell on causes and all the rest of it. But we spent a massive amount of money on this guy. Is is that something that we're looking at going forward? We're spending big money on these guys in the hope aye, that but... we're going to make massive profits or... I know what you're saying there, but I, I, I think if Celtic's spending maybe six, seven, eight million on a player, then you're looking for almost the finished article at that point. Um, if you're getting guys at two or three million for to sell on for bigger fees, then they, they could be a more, of a more of a project, if you like. But Edward, I think, had came in, uh, as an example, he'd came in and he'd, I think he'd came in on loan and then he'd, he'd proved what he could do. Then they shelled out the big money. I mean, granted, he, 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 he wasn't the finished article, and he probably still isn't, but you could tell he was he was like, he's going to be, and he is probably a world-class striker. Um, so I, I, I mean, I take your point. Like, I'm, I'm just sort of giving a, another side it, if you like. Uh, no, but I mean, it's a valid point. I mean, I, I think ultimately we don't know what it means. Um, I don't think anybody does. Uh, so I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, what sort of comes out over the next uh, the next year or two. Um, and, and, and like I said, I hope we hear from Dominic a little more as well, with, uh, given the fact that he comes with that fan engagement background. He definitely so, seems like a more media-friendly face than Lowell did anyway. Yeah, I absolutely. I think we can all agree on that. Well, definitely. Me, yeah. um, but guys, that's us. Um, thanks for coming on uh, well, we're hoping to obviously get as much guys as possible but obviously personal circumstances these things happen so cheers to you too I'm away to I'm away to get on Kenny big maternity pillies that wrap around you I'm away to get one of them and put big Angie's face in it because he made me feel all nice and everything's going to be alright <laughs> I know that well, about... <laughs> I, I actually don't know <laughs> I don't either but I'll, I'll take I'm assuming it's, it's, I, it's something have that you've never been so... pregnant <laughs> I uh, yeah, kids, it's a bit no. two years ago but I'll post wait <laughs> <laughs> but hi guys no thanks for that um, just a couple of other things uh, as well uh, tomorrow we've got the the Scotland Euros the Endless Celts Euro edition uh, where we focus on the sort of Scotland's journey through the Euros um, so we've got the full panel on uh, for that. that that'll be up at lunchtime tomorrow uh, and on Sunday, we've got a uh, Stevens interview with Jack Aitchison, who we both know uh, as a guy from Fault House, um, who made a name for himself when he became uh, Celtic's youngest ever goal scorer. So that should be interesting. Um, anything else you boys want to add just before we wrap this? Uh, no, no, I'm cool, man. I'm all right. I'm just frantically looking for this pillow now. So. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, well, uh, to everybody that's listened, thanks uh, for obviously your continued support and tuning in. Uh, if you're checking us out on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe, uh, like the video, comment as well, because we interact with anybody that comments. We like to have a chat with you guys. Uh, and if you're listening on any other platform like uh, Spotify, iTunes, just uh, bookmark it, get a wee follow uh, to make sure you catch all the recent episodes. But uh, until next time, uh, as Stephen would say, uh, stay safe and hail, hail.